وَاتَّقُوا فِتْنَةً لَا تُصِيبَنَّ الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا مِنْكُمْ خَاصَّةً وَاعْلَمُوا أَنَّ اللَّهَ شَدِيدُ الْعِقَابِ And guard yourselves against a chastisement which cannot fall exclusively on those of you who are wrongdoers and know that Allah is severe in punishment. Inna alhamdulillah, nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'firuhu wa nu'minu bihi wa natawakkalu alayhi wa na'udhu billahi min shuroori anfusina wa min sayyati a'malina man yahdihi allahu falamudilla lah wa man yudlilhu falahadiya lah وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن خير الكلام كلام الله وخير الهدى هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يتع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما. Brothers and sisters, pray to Allah subhanahu wa taala that may Allah give us sincerity to speak the truth in the light of the Quran and the Sunnah of Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم to understand them. to accept them in the hearts and to implement them in the life. Today's topic is about the chastisement will not fall only on the evildoers. This is a very important subject. It is dedicated to the Muslims today who are in the West. This is the subject that we know that what's happening in the East now. In the Maghrib, we are here in Maghrib, this is called West, and the Sharq where we see Syria, Iraq, Saudi Arabia, Yemen, and different places where you see that innocent children are being killed. Muslims as well as non-Muslims, those who are living there with them, they all are dying. And the fight is between the Muslims. And according to me, based on today's khutbah, inshallah, as I said, this is dedicated to all of you. All of you, all the Muslims in the world, that according to my understanding, this is nothing but the test of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For the believers, it's a reward in this form. And for the disbelievers or for the wrongdoers, Valimeen, it's a chastisement, punishment of Allah. And where did I get this topic from? Because since last month I was asking myself, and I was putting the question that what's happening now? After reading so many ahadith where it speaks about coming of the Jal, coming of Isa salam, and there will be a war between Muslims and non-Muslims and the, the, again there will be a fight for the Constantinia which is uh, uh, Constantinople and the Istanbul that we have today and uh, the whole thing I was asking so many questions like that and this is one of the reasons that I came to Islam when I was an atheist, born in a Muslim family. I used to ask questions to myself. I used to ask questions to Allah. I used to open the Quran randomly to find the answer. And what is happening today with the Muslims? Now this is very serious statement I'm telling you. I'm not Rasul. I'm not a Peghambar or a Prophet or Rasul, but I'm telling you the truth. And I'm giving you, I'm telling you full, you know, like prediction that what is happening in the East now, it will not stop. 
Remember that. What is happening in the East now, it will not stop. It has been confirmed from the Quran. It has been confirmed from the Ahadith of Prophet Sallallahu And it has been already predicted and pre-told. Pre-told about this. So, it won't stop. That means we have to just accept it? No, we have to give the reason to it. And the reason only Allah can give us the best reason. Nobody else. And that reason we have to work out. Because East is not far from West. And West is not far from East. One of the signs before the Qiyamah, before the end of time, the distance between the places will be close, very nearby. They will be very close to each other and that's true. If you want to travel from here to Dubai, seven hours, six hours. From Dubai to Bombay, two and a half hours. But if you see the miles, it's thousands and thousands of miles distance, but your traveling has made it so close to each other, nearby. So why I brought this is statement that it, their west is not far from east and east is not far from west because what, hey, what is happening in the east that can even happen to us in a very near future in the west as well. Again I repeat, what is happening in the east it will not stop. And because the distance is not far, east and west they are not far from each other so what is happening there it will come to us soon very near future but as muslims we have to go back to the quran you have to go back to the sunnah to give there to know the reason and after finding the reason it still we become ignorant then this is what Rasul has said and all the prophets of Allah in the past said that our duty was to convey the truth to the people and the rest is left to them. You accept it, you ignore it, you improve it, to rectify it, it's all left to you. So the topic today is that the chastisement, the punishment, the curse of Allah the disaster will not be only for the wrongdoers. It will not be only for the wrongdoers. It can be for everybody due to the reason and condition. Let's see the ayah says, Suratul Anfal. Pay attention, my brothers and sisters. Pay attention to these words because I won't be stopping. I'll keep on continuously speaking about it now. So if you miss out any point, then it is not my fault. I'm asking you to pay attention. Surah Al-Anfal, chapter 8, verse 25, it says, وَاتَّقُوا فِتْنَةً لَا تُصِيبَنَّ الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا مِنْكُمْ خَاصَّةً وَعْلَمُوا أَنَّ اللَّهَ شَدِيدُ الْعِقَابِ Fear the chastisement of Allah. Fear the punishment of Allah. Fear the punishment of Allah, fear the conflictions from Allah, fear the fitna from Allah. لا تصيبن الذين ظلموا منكم خاصة It will not only come to the people who are wrongdoers. It will not go only to the ظالمين. وعلموا And remember that Allah is شديد العقاب is very powerful in punishment. Now let's understand this ayah. Number one, it gives us the warning from Allah that the chastisement is there from Allah. Number two, it says that certainly, certainly no doubt, all the wrongdoers will have the punishment from Allah. The third thing Allah is saying that it is not only for them, which means it can be for other than volume people. And the fourth thing is that I will give you the evidence to it as well. The fourth point is that this chastisement from Allah to the volume is a reason because they are volume. 
But the ayah says that it is not only for them, it can be for other, other people also. So what is the reason and cause that we have to learn in this khutbah today? Inshallah. Second thing, the fifth point from this ayah we understand that, which will give you the evidence inshallah, that accepting the wrongdoings, accepting the wrong things happening around us, we accept it, then we fall into the same punishment of Allah because we will be categorized as one who is doing and the one who is accepting. They both are same. Number six, the reason which I'm going to tell you now that why other people will be punished, why other than the volume will have the, the, uh, this chastisement in their life is because if they see the wrongdoers are doing something wrong and they don't stop them, they ignore them or they accept them and they don't bother. So the punishment will come to them as well. إن الحمد لله نحمد ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد حديث from Sahih Muslim موطي ما مالك Sahih Bukhari and Tirmidhi and different books of our hadith reported by Zainab bint Jahshin رضي الله تعالى عنها I won't read the Arabic because it will take more, lots of time. She reported that Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam got up from his sleep one night. Then he said this, these are the words when he woke up. There is no being worthy of worship except Allah. La ilaha illallah. Prophet was quite worried. There is a destruction in Store for Arab. Prophet ﷺ was referring to the East. Because of the turmoil which is at hand, which is very close to them. And then Allah is saying, Rasul is saying, the barrier of the Gog and Magog has opened so much. So Rasul, three things we come from we come to know from this hadith. Bukhari, Muslim, Tirmidhi, Abu Dawood, Nisai, Ibn Majah, and all the books of our hadith. Hadith says Prophet ﷺ was sleeping. And he woke up in worries. And then he started saying, La ilaha illallah, La ilaha illallah. And then he confirmed that the Arabs will be destroyed. And they, uh, he's saying that the punishment and the chastisement and fitna and trial will be very, is very close to them. And then he said two things. That the Gog and Magog, they, were, they are behind the barrier and that barrier is now going to open and it has already opened this, this much. He showed the finger there with the uh, sign with the finger. Three points we learn from this. Number one. That Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam is giving us the warning that there will be end of time, there will be evil thing will take place. The turmoil, the punishment, the chastisement will be at the end of time, and emergence of Gog and Magog will be at the end of time. And Prophet sallallahu is saying that the kufr, the disbelief and disobedience, and the zulm and the crime will be predominant before the end of time which will incur, which will invite the punishment of Allah. Number five, it says the nations, which is Arab is a nation. So Prophet is saying the Arab nation will be destroyed at the end of time. It also says the disappearance of the pious people will be at the end of time. Means all the pious people, Arabs or non-Arabs, but the pious people will disappear from the face of the earth before the end of time. 
and punishment is certain for the evil doers. Another hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam reported in Tirmidhi, Musnad Imam Ahmad, and different books of hadith. Reported by Umm Salima radiallahu ta'ala anha salama. She says that I heard Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying, If sins become apparent, pay attention to this. As I said, east is not far from west. If sins become apparent in my ummah, he is not saying about the kuffar. Some people say, say the Jews and the Christians are also prophets ummah. But here this consensus of the scholar that Rasul is referring to the Muslims who believe in the Quran and the Sunnah, he is referring to that specific ummah. And Rasul is saying when the sin, sins become apparent in my ummah, which means haram ghar ghar mein jab bajne hone lagega. When the haram is apparent all over within my ummah, Allah will surround them with punishment from him. When this hadith was said to the Sahaba, you know Sahaba's reaction will be opposite of that. They will not accept it. Because Sahaba were not those people who were incurring this uh, sin. Sahaba, they came out of the sin. They came out of the darkness to the light. They came from murdering people to Islam. They were fornicators, they were Zanis, they were doing zina. They were in gamblings, they were doing zulm on the people, they came from that darkness to Islam. So when they heard this, that the sins will come back to Islam again, they didn't accept it. And what did they say? They understood, according to them, they understood that these sinners will not be believers. So see what they said. The question came up. Then, as Umar Salama is saying, I asked him, I asked Rasulullah Salam, O oh Allah's Messenger, will they have righteous people among them when Allah's punishment will fall on them, the sinners? See, then their understanding, they think that the believers cannot sin. And that is the reason when the punishment is mentioned by Rasulullah, immediately she asked that what about the past people living with them when the punishment of Allah will come? Then Rasul said, Yes, they will be with them. Then she said, I asked him, what will happen to them? Then Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to her, they will be stricken as the people, but they will end up with Allah's forgiveness and pleasure on the day of judgment. Which means, when the chastisement, when the punishment, when the disaster, when the calamity, when the wrath and the curse of Allah will fall upon the people, who are sinful people, could be believers, sinful people, could be non-Muslims. But when this calamity, wrath and disaster and punishment and chastisement will fall on them, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will include even the Muslims and believers and pious also with the same punishment. But they will be judged on the day of judgment based on their intention and akhir niyyah, how they die. Another hadith of Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Abu Bakr, Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he recited the ayah to the people and said, Ya ayuha alladhina amanu alaykum anfusakum, la yadurrukum man dalla idha hatadaytum. O believers, stick to your iman. Nothing, no harm will come to you if you are on the right path, if you are guided. But when this ayah came down, all the Muslims were believing that no Muslims will be harmed by any calamity, disaster, because Allah is saying if you are believers and you will be on the right path, nothing will happen. But they came into a situation where Umar was stabbed. Yes or no? You know from the history that Umar, when he became the second Khalifa, he was stabbed in the Fajr prayer. Fitna started. So harm came to a believer and one of the greatest believer. Fitna came at the time when Uthman's head was chopped. <coughs> Muslims were there against him. They killed him. The time came when Ali had to fight with another Muslim group. 
Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha had to fight with another Muslim group. So this ayah is actually according to them, it was unclear to them. How come Allah is promising us that the believers will not be harmed? And here we are seeing that the believers are being seriously harmed. Muslims are killing other Muslims. How is that? Then Abu Bakr an, when he saw that the fitna is coming up, and when he was, so the students, they narrated this ayah and hadith of Rasulullah from Abu Bakr. Abu Bakr. Now pay attention to this. I want to repeat these words in Arabic as well as in English as well. Inna nasa idha ra'aw al-zalima falam ya'khudhu ala yadayhi aw shaka an ya'ummahum allahu bi'iqabin minhum. Allahu Akbar. When the people see the wrongdoers are doing haram, doing zul, and they have the ability, because another hadith says that they have the ability to stop them, and they have not, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will punish the zalim and the one who has remained silent. What does that mean? It means when the fitna is coming, and if we don't stop the fitna, then the fitna will bring the punishment and we will be part of that tsunami. Allahu Akbar. Another hadith of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Sunan Abu Dawood. Ma min qawmin yu'malu fihim bil ma'asi. Ma min qawmin yu'malu fihim bil ma'asi. هم أكثر ممن يعمله الله أكبر. Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم has said when the people see a wrongdoer. Okay, now this is the actual translation. If acts of disobedience, obedience done among any people, disobedience among any people, and who are more numerous than those who disobey. Then subhanallah, the punishment will become common. This is the continuation of the hadith. Now coming back to the point, the reason of this is that why the calamity will even include, the tsunami will include the believers as well, because of two reasons. That they are in the place where the sinners are there. Okay? I'm not referring to the West. So people are saying, oh, no, the, this is West and we should make hijrah to Muslim country. According to my understanding, I don't know what is the definition of East and West. Muslim country. Yeah. I don't know the definition of a Muslim country, alhamdulillah. Because if we say that if East is Muslim country is now, we can see what's happening there. So man with weak iman will say, I'm still better off in UK than Iraq and Syria, a man with weak iman, he would say, I'm better off in UK than in Iraq and Syria because I may fall into problem, but what's the problem with my wife? My wife has done nothing. Why my children are going to die in the chemical bombs? So this is, this is what it says. First reason, pay attention to this. For me, any place is the place of Allah where you remember Allah. And for me, even if you, you know, fight in the masjid, that masjid is not the house of Allah. Quran has said in Surah Al-Tawbah, Masjid Al-Dirar. This is a masjid which is a harmful masjid where the people are killing each, each other and fighting with each other. So remember that there is no definition of any Islamic uh, country or Islamic place. My understanding, you agree with or you don't agree, alhamdulillah. But my understanding is, Islam is everywhere where you can pr practice your religion. Regardless of the countries, because Allah, Allah didn't divide this West to like as a kafir country and Saudi as a Muslim country. No, Allah didn't divide that. It is we, we, we have divided that. India was a Muslim country for 300 years. Now India is BJP, my Meradesh Mahan, Bharat Mahan. So this is India now. So you can't say that it was Islam before and Muslim country before, now it is Kafir country. So I can say, yes, the definition is correct. It's not because of the land, it's because of we, who we are, what we are doing, what we are practicing. 
So if you are Muslims, the place is Islamic. And if you are non-Muslims, the place is non-Islamic. So it's based on what you present in your, and this is the hadith of Rasulullah لا تجعلوا بيوتكم مقابر لا تجعلوا بيوتكم بيوتكم مقابر اجعلوا فيها من الصلاوات والقراءة القرآن والذكر الله that don't make your houses like graveyards. You are not changing your house to graveyard, but there is a reason for it to become a graveyard. And then he says, don't do it. What you have to do to make it a house, to look, make it look, look like a real house, then pray your sunnah prayers there, do the reading of the Quran in there, or do the remembrance of Allah. And if you don't have namaz in your house, if you don't have zikrullah in your house, and if you don't have uh, the tilawat al-Quran in your house, your house is like a graveyard, even if 18 people living in that. I know some houses, they have 18 members in them. Another hadith of Rasul Sallallahu Now coming back to the subject. I said this punishment of Allah will not befall only to the non-Muslims or the Zalimin. It will include all of us. And the punishment will come to the people where people will be committing sins. They will invite this punishment of Allah and those people who are with them and they remain silent, they will be also dragged with that uh, tsunami of the punishment of Allah. Let's see the hadith of Rasul Sallallahu Now coming back to the causes and reasons. Hadith reported by Hudayfat ibn al-Yaman radiallahu an from Tirmidhi. Hadith is Hassan. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi has said, by the one in whose hand is my soul, either you command good and forbid evil, or Allah will soon, soon send upon you a punishment from him, then you will call upon him and it will not be responded. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is telling all of us, now this is the responsibility for you and me, all of us, our brothers, it is our responsibility, our sisters, it is our responsibilities. Mulvis, Imams, Khatibs, teachers, uh, uh, managers, directors, or businessmen, all of them, if they are Muslims, Rasulullah is saying that when you see munkar, you should tell that, that this is munkar. When you see evil things are happening, try to stop it. Command them of the truth and stop them from the evil. If not, if not, then the evil will bring the punishment of Allah and you will be part of that. And those people who remain silent, this is the hadith, it's not my words. And those people who remain silent against the evil, they don't talk, they don't like to do it. They, take, they say it's Molvi's business. Molvi ka kaam hai, hamara kya karna hai? Why, why should we bother? No, if they remain silent and the punishment comes, and if they raise their hands, even in Haram, in Taraweeh, in Qiyamul Layl, even if they make, you know, raise their hands and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala two hours every day, three hours every night, and 30 days of the month of Ramadan, Allah is saying, I will not respond to your dua. This is the result that last year what happened to the Muslims? It is worse this year. Why? If Ramadan was gone, if Ramadan had Taraweeh for 30 days, 29 days, and every Taraweeh, 20 rakat or 8 rakat, every Taraweeh had got Dua Qunut. Qunut is read when the people are in trouble, when the calamity falls on them, when the Qunut is read on them, and Qunut is to ask Allah to remove them from the calamities. 30 days, the best place of the earth, Mecca, the best masjid of the earth, Haram, Numbers of people who are making dua there and they are raising their hands. But the situation of the last year, situation of the last Qunut, situations of the last Ramadan is worse now when it comes to this situation. The situation of the Muslims is worse now than last year. Hadith gives you the reason. I ask Allah, Allah, what's the reason? Allah is saying that if you see munkar and you ignore your responsibilities and you leave it to others, 
And when Allah's punishment will come, and then when you raise your hands, even in haram, Allah will not respond to your duas. That means you have to fulfill the duties. And what is the duty? According to me, a weak person, single Muslim, okay, not single Muslim for marriage.com, single Muslim, independent Muslim, with my wife and children, my duty is to at least stop my family. You are my brothers and sisters. You are my family. My duty is to tell you. You may take it, you may relieve, you know, ignore it. I have done my job. I can't do more than this and I can't challenge the kuffar. Okay, come, I'm a superman. I've got, you know, power of Batman. I've got a power of Superman. I've got power of Spider-Man. Your beam bombs and missiles will not harm me. Come, that's stupidity. So, I'm giving you the smallest example. Alaykum and Fusakum. Be and Fusakum. You are responsible for your own self. You are responsible for your wives. You are responsible for your husbands. You are responsible, responsible for your families. Quran in Surah Al-Tahrim, chapter 66, verse 6, Allah SWT is saying, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu, qu anfusakum wa ahlikum nara. O believers, protect yourself and your family from the hellfire. That's the minimum we can do. Maximum, yes, we, wish, we wait for Mahdi to come. Allah alam when he will come. We wait for Isa to come. Allah alam when he will come. But Allah has given us the reason that the chastisement will not come only to the zalim. Chastisement will come to the believers if they ignore their responsibilities of correcting the munkar. Finally, let me end up this khutbah. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has given us the example. That a group of people are boarding the ship. It has got two floors and one ground floor. People on the ground floor, they are in need of water. Pay attention to this. People are in the ground floor. They need need of water. So to get the water for the whole people in the ground floor, they had to climb up first floor, second floor, and then they have to reach to the water to bring it back to them. These people with good intention, always good intentions will not benefit you. These people with good intention, they said that we are in the sea. The whole ship is in the sea. Why to trouble people in the first floor? Why to trouble people in the second floor? Why can't just make a small hole underneath and take the water that, water that we need? They started doing that. And the intelligent people, the genius, Einstein people, I call them intestine. They don't have brain. So they are not Einstein, they are intestine. <laughs> because everything, every problem is in their <laughs> belly. <laughs> okay. So the people in the second floor and first floor, they are enjoying. They ask them, okay, what are you doing? We hear you some making some noises. They said, don't worry, we don't want to trouble you. We need water, so we are just making, digging a hole inside the floor so that the water, we can take it as much as what, what we want. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, you intestine, if you would have advised them not to do that, then you would have saved them and yourself. They saw the munkar, but munkar was not clear. Munkar was not clear. The haram was not clear. The damage was not clear. The harm was not clear. And the intention of the people who were doing haram, harm, they, it, their intention was also not bad. But the result was definitely bad. And if you know that the result will be bad, you have to stop that. 
You can't just see, okay, house number 33 caught fire. And you are thinking 31 will not catch fire, so don't worry. I'm, I'm in 31, no problem. I'm in 37, no problem. Idiot, 33 is in between 31 and 37, 35. If the fire caught to the house 33, your two houses are also not. Same. Put off the fire in 33. Help them to save your own houses. This is the hadith of Prophet Muhammad Wasallam. So let me conclude this. My topic today was about that the chastisement will not fall only upon the wrongdoers. Which means, ayah from Surah Al-Anfal, please, at least go home and read this ayah. This is the homework which I'm giving you as a father figure, as an elder brother to you, as sheikh to you. I'm giving you this advice. Go back to your houses, open Surah Quran, chapter 8, verse 25. Allah is saying, وَاتَّقُوا فِتْنَةً لَا تُصِيبَنَّ الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا مِنْكُمْ خَاصَّةً وَعَلَمُوا أَنَّ اللَّهَ شَدِيدُ الْعِقَابِ That fear, Allah's chastisement, Allah's punishment, Allah's wrath, Allah's disaster, Allah's tsunami, that it will not come only to the bad people, it can come to anybody, and fear Allah's punishment because Allah is powerful in punishing. And I gave you the reason, that Sahaba, when they heard this, Rasul <coughs> has said, even the pious people will be dragged with them, and then they will be judged on the day of judgment based on their intentions. But the punishment will come certainly for those people who see munkar, who see evil, and they don't try to stop it, then they are part of it, and they will be punished <coughs> altogether the same. And the reason I brought this hadith to you all, my brothers and sisters, we see what's happening in Syria. We see what's happening in Yemen and Saudi Arabia. And we think that it is in East and we are in sitting in West. So we are all, alhamdulillah, every month our account is increasing. Pounds are increasing. We see uh, at every day the coins with the picture of our Queen Elizabeth. So we are happy with that. And we think it is far. The fire is in East and we are too far. So nothing will happen to us, no, my brothers and sisters. This khutbah was dedicated to all of you, and this is for every Muslim who has got wife, husband, children, mothers, brothers, and friends. If you are honest to yourself, wish good for your brothers and sisters what you wish for yourself. And this is the reason I brought this khutbah to you all, that punishment is not far from us if we ignore our responsibilities. In Allah wa malaikati yusalluna ala nabi. يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد